Hello everybody, and welcome back to the channel. I'm Todd Mariana, opcode 66, and today I'm going to show you guys the work that I have recently put in on what I call VSAD, Virtual Streaming Audio Device. And I'm going to start the video here. So my, uh, my friend, my dearest friend, my little baby, Tyler has passed away. Um, these are some pictures of him in his last couple days with me. This was really hard on me because he was so much part of my life, a part of my heart. And uh, with him gone, I've just been heartbroken and I haven't really been able to do much. So it took a while for me to sort of come back from this because he was just such a good friend to me. I'll always love him. I will always miss him. Love you, Ty. So after taking some time off, I um, decided to take on a new project and to truly challenge myself this time. And so this is what I decided to work out on things that I've wanted to sort out for a while, a variety of things. So this is the hardware. I wrote firmware for the microchip that's sort of in the middle of the picture. To the right is a DAC. And to the left is a plug-in card that has a network controller chip on it. So altogether, this is a network streaming audio piece of hardware. The other end can either be an app, which I'll show you in a bit, or this driver, which I worked on. And this took a lot of time. So it's all written in Visual C++, as you see here. It's based on a sample project from the Windows driver kit, the WDK. Um, and it, it does work from Ableton. It also works as the standard Windows audio device driver. I will show you guys all these scenarios, but first let's have a look at the troublesome beginning of the hardware development. It took a while to get the firmware just right, and uh, audio was not sounding too good at first, so let's have a listen. Playing, right? Actually, sort of sounds like the music. A lot closer. Yeah, but... <laughs> so, that was uh, a lot of fun to get right. Once I did get it right, then I was able to actually stream audio to it nicely. Um, I'm going to take this point in the video to please remind everybody to like and comment and subscribe. Please do subscribe. Help me get to monetization. Once I got the hardware right, I was able to stream audio to it and also control the volume through a DSP algorithm. And so this is written in .NET, and this uses a TCP client object to just simply read a WAV file and stream the bytes over the network to that TCP port and IP address that this thing is seated on. And like I said, I can also affect its volume of the playback uh, by sending messages to a separate TCP port. So, in here. And this is sounding perfect, right? There's no glitches in the audio or anything. Unlike playing on my other test computer, like through Ableton, um, there were some glitches because it just wasn't... It's, <laughs> it's not the best platform to test audio on. And you can hear that's really smooth. There's no hiccups, there's no glitching. Getting all of that going was quite a lot of work all by itself. 
but I decided to take it a step further. Uh, any streaming audio solution like this has its own driver, its own kernel driver that can take audio from any DAW and stream it over a network. And so that's what I started to develop, and here is what it first sounded like. It's not quite right. Perfect. I can hear a little, little glitching here and there. But what is working is starting and stopping. That was not working before. It still is a little glitchy. Now it's glitching out. Shouldn't be doing that. It's getting a lot closer to being right. Ugh. All right. Well, it worked nice. It played nice for a few rounds, and and then it started glitching out, like you just saw. So, still gets a little crunchy here or there. And mostly that is because of the buffering on this end. It's not really the driver. I've done everything in the driver I can to account for this thing, just not having enough memory space. But it's playing smoothly, it's not crunching up. I don't hear any, any glitches in the audio. I'm about to load Ableton and hopefully it'll work from there too. So definitely having some glitching when I'm using it from uh, Ableton. I'm going to try tweaking some settings, but it is streaming. So I just hit stop and it just caught up with itself. Hit play. Oh, and it works. So if I change some values, I should be able to resolve the um, audio problem that you're hearing. But right now you can see, and in fact, let me try changing it to the wave version instead of the direct X version. But yeah, dude, you can see there it is. Output device. No, it doesn't like, oh, about the same. I'm gonna play with the settings, but awesome. This is great. It's not perfect, but I don't care. This is just really proof of concept. And just to see if I could do it. So interesting, I uh, minimized this guy and it's now playing perfectly. Or, you know, very close to that. Um, so what that tells me is it's because uh, I, I'm using the onboard, the um, <clears throat> graphics provided by the motherboard. So it's not very good graphics. Plus there is no Windows 10 driver for that integrated graphics. So it's because the computer is trying to do too much at once. It's, it's now working okay, but um, it works really smoothly when I minimize Ableton. So it's just because this computer is a dog. So definitely more than just proof of concept, this works. And this works pretty well. 
yeah, I'm, I'm really happy with this. Uh, if I were to install either more RAM or a dedicated video card into this computer, then this would be rocking. And I'd have like zero latency, but whatever, this is good enough. Um, So you can see, there's my driver, and um, it is the default playback device. So if we go over here and we click on this, you can see that's because it is the only playback device. Um, <clears throat> so I'm just going to double click on this wave file. So you can see in here that it operates much better through just normal um, Windows Media Player. When I use Ableton, Ableton is using a lot of resources in addition to me streaming this stuff out, and so they're competing with each other, and on this older computer, it was causing a lot of glitches. So I think some of the dropouts and stuff that you can even hear right now are just, a, you know, not, not our effect of that. If I was to run this on a better computer, um, at least on a computer with a dedicated video card, uh, and more than four gigs of RAM, this would work great. But, I mean, you can see it's highly responsive. Oh, and incidentally, I have tape over these because those LEDs are just blinding, and uh, otherwise I'd be blind by, by now, by just having that in front of me for the amount of time that it's taken me to, to develop all of this, um, this entire system, the firmware, as well as the driver. Music by uh, Brian Gardner. This is the DL2. Go and check him out at Soul Foundation. Soul Foundation Recordings. So I'm going to show you guys how I go ahead and install this test driver. Um, since it is a test driver, it's not officially signed. You have to use a special uh, command line process to do that. So I wrote this app to assist with doing that, as well as doing other tasks like starting and stopping tracing, opening the device manager, opening Windows Explorer, installing and uninstalling the driver, rebooting the machine, and also playing wave. So you can see I just clicked the button to install. It popped up a warning. I said, okay, it's okay. This unknown device is now going to say opcode 66 VSAD, which is virtual streaming audio device. Um, so the files that you see in the file explorer are the files that are compiled for the driver. It's based on MSVAD, which is a, uh, an example project that Microsoft supplies. I just took that code and um, you know, added my own for doing the streaming. So you can see once I open up Ableton and once it lets me in, uh, I can open up the audio configuration and show you guys that you can in fact select that as your driver. And it comes up as either DirectX, DX, or Wave. Um, and you could also do an ASIO wrapper for it. Right now I've got it at 48K sample rate. And I'm gonna drag in Brian's track and hit play. And so you can see that this driver, you know, at least this Windows driver, I could also make a core audio driver for Mac, um, would work with any DAW. And uh, so that's it for this installment. I know it's not the best video that you've probably ever seen from me, but uh, that's all I can do right now. So please, everybody, be well and take care of yourselves. And please be kind to others. And I will see you all next time. Namaskar. Hello, devoted fans, and I know that you are because you have made it to 
this point in the video and you are still here. So you get a special bonus. Here is me explaining exactly what each one of those cards are and what they do in my hardware. So I'll just quickly explain this conglomeration of eval boards from microchip.com. Um, this one over here, that chip is one of their network controller solutions. So that board is just basically dedicated to ethernet and um, it talks to this chip right here. So this is another eval board that is sandwiched onto this backplane. So this backplane is meant to do exactly what it's doing right now, which is to bring a lot of different eval boards together. It has what's called pigtail, which is essentially like an ISA bus slot. Uh, it also, so it's got two of those and you can see it's male and female. So it also can be connected to another pigtail. Um, and there are also uh, these female headers, pin headers, so you can do exactly what I've done, which is wire in something else. And this is another one of their eval boards. This is um, just a DAC, right? So <clears throat> I am sending it audio SPI. And when you do that, it's typically referred to as a SPORT, S-P-O-R-T, SPI port for audio. I am doing I squared S, so just two channels, high resolution. Um, and so essentially what happens with this device is this uh, audio comes in over the network and i'm doing it unicast so tcp which is guaranteed delivery unlike udp unicast which is faster but not guaranteed delivery um, i could do either um, this chip actually seats itself on my network and knows where it needs to go so it's no zero configuration there um, so it becomes available on an IP address. I can, like I say, unicast, send it audio over TCP at a certain port, and it will take that audio in. Uh, it's coming in SPI, and then it goes into a DMA channel, DMA channel into um, the chip's logic, and I can apply a basic DSP, which is this volume knob. So this volume knob and this app will actually send out commands onto a separate TCP port, and it will affect the volume setting within the chip, within the firmware. And so any, vo uh, any audio that passes through will then have that uh, volume attenuation applied. And then same thing, DMA channel to SPI, and then over these wires, this thing needs not only SPI, it needs some clock values, it also needs I squared C for configuration. Um, but that's basically it. And, you know, I wrote, I figured out how to deal with their network stack and how to deal with their audio stack and how to bring it all together. And also, like I say, add some DSP on top of it. I could do other things, but I'm actually reaching the limitations of uh, the available memory space that I have in that chip. So I'd have to bring something else in like some flash RAM or SD RAM. Um, but at this point, you know, I would just start to go to some proto boards. Um, Thank you again for supporting me and my work. I'll see you soon.